It's day 60 of 365, a new month. If you haven't been doing so, it's another opportunity to approach this new season with enthusiasm. We are, after all, just living in what we asked for, a future where we can tap into our passion, grow in our profession, start that business, travel, own multiple assets, reap the rewards of a well-thought-out investment. Whatever it is, just know it's attainable. Leap if you must, but don't hesitate to take a chance at an opportunity to make true the ambitions you have prescribed for yourself. Hello, March. Hello to you and happy new month. I'm Adrian Atkinson and this is where we get into the day's magazine. I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, March 1. The community of Stony Hill in St. Andrew will receive a new police station following the groundbreaking for the start of construction. The scope of the project includes the demolition of the wooden structure, reinforcing the walls of the ground floor and reconstruction of the upper floor. When completed, it will be a 5,000 square foot two-story building with living quarters and a holding area. The project is being financed and managed by the National Housing Trust, the NHT. At the groundbreaking ceremony last week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the community was deserving of a new station. That this is primarily about improving the service delivery of our police force. It is also about improving the morale of the police force. But there is some strategic thinking behind it, which we haven't said, but I will say it now. It is a part of the establishment of the Jamaican state in all communities around the country. The construction of the Stony Hill Police Station is part of the Ministry of National Security's project Rebuild, Overhaul and Construct Rock to upgrade stations across the island. It is a part of a con overall framework of ensuring that the police infrastructure is in good order. It means buildings, transportation, communication, the backroom work of intelligence, and also providing from the government side the legal framework as we work to bring new legislation to the table. Arrangements are being made for displaced Jamaican students who are studying in the Ukraine to continue their education. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith gave the update Monday on the ministry's official Twitter page. Government underwrote the cost of transportation, lodging and subsistence to get the Jamaican students safely to Poland after conflict broke out between Ukraine and Russia last week. We had engaged UA early in, in this process. We'll re-engage them to see if there's any possibility at all of accommodation. And we'll also reach out to bilateral partners to see if they have any programs in place which will be seeking to accommodate uh, students who have been disrupted in, um, from their studies in Ukraine specifically. Uh, there are no guarantees, of course, uh, but there may well be and we will explore them. Minister Johnson Smith says flights have been booked for 20 students to travel by air from Poland to Germany, then on to Jamaica. Once on the island, arrangements have been made to provide transport to their respective locations as well as access to counselling services. Minister Johnson Smith also gave an update on three students who decided to remain in Europe. She says two of the three students were at a safe location in the Ukraine, while the third is being supported in Romania. Farmers in St. Mary are now benefiting from the establishment of the new Penn Agricultural Production Zone expected to boost the production of Irish potatoes and other crops. The newly opened 344-hectare facility is being managed by Agroinvestment Corporation, AIC. The primary crops being cultivated are Irish and sweet potatoes, tomato, pepper, papaya and cabbage. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Pernell Charles Jr. says the establishment of this agri-production zone will be an added boost to farmers to help improve their processes, productivity and expand their horizons. And I believe it is 35 farmers and perhaps more to come that will be able to access and benefit from the coordination, from the support, from being able to 
access market and just to be guided and supported um, in achieving the best outcome that you can. We want you to be successful. When you are successful, when you win, Jamaica wins. And that is the goal of the government. Minister Charles Jr. was speaking during a recent opening and tour of the Irish Potato Farms. The AIC will also provide business planning services and assistance with securing grant funding, as well as support in establishing market linkages, crop selection and guidance on developing best agricultural practices. New Penn is one of the key farming districts in St. Mary, with approximately 500 hectares of land currently under production by over 60 farmers. The country's health sector continues to receive support for the COVID-19 recovery effort. MedGive Foundation, a registered non-profit organization in New York, is providing medical supplies valuing more than $87,000. The donation was channeled through the National Health Fund, NHF, to the Southern Regional Health Authority. Items include lab coats, gloves, face masks, and an assortment of medical instruments. Speaking at Friday's handing over, CEO of the NHF, Everton Anderson, said the donation reflected hope of continued partnerships. We at the NHF, I don't think we've seen ever a time as now when we work together as one country. And one country to include those abroad who have seen it fit to give generously, even in these difficult times. I remember, I think a year ago, I don't think we could find space in one of our warehouses to walk because of the generous donations from various organizations and from Jamaicans. The merger of the Consumer Affairs Commission and the Fair Trading Commission is set to be completed in the next six months under the government's Public Sector Transformation Program. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, says the merger needs to be completed quickly to facilitate the ease of doing business while protecting consumers. He was speaking at the two entities' virtual quarterly media briefing last week. If this ministry is committed to the ease of doing business, we must remove duplication and cut bureaucracy. I know that the two heads of the agencies, their boards and their teams are committed to the process and they will work fervently to ensure that this six month deadline is met. Our team at the ministry will monitor and will be available to support this process as needed. Chairman of the entities Donovan White says the merger committee is now working to bring the back end administrative services that supports both organizations together. We are trying to finish the, the administrative side by managing the pieces of um, handling, um, uh, the staffing, uh, assignment of roles, um, recreation of job descriptions. Um, we have to deal with the issues of, 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 of compensation analysis. We have to deal with the issues of um, budgeting um, from the perspective of, of, of gaining the efficiencies that the merger has sought to, to do. Um, so there is still a significant amount, a significant body of work um, that, is, that is to be completed. And finally, Jamaica has reiterated its commitment to the country's environmental protection targets. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Matthew Samuda, spoke on the matter earlier today at the fifth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, now underway in Nairobi, Kenya. He says government supports a proposal through UNEA 5.2 to establish an intergovernmental negotiating committee on plastics. This, the minister says, sends a clear signal that Jamaica will build on its efforts to reduce plastic pollution under the phased ban on single-use plastics and will continue to work with the multilateral community to deal with the scourge of plastic waste definitively. In December 2020, Jamaica, along with 13 other countries, announced through the high-level panel on a sustainable ocean economy their commitment to a new global action agenda which seeks to achieve 100% sustainable ocean management areas within its national jurisdiction and sustainable ocean plans by 2020-25 and to target protection of 30% of our ocean by 2030. Among the country's international biodiversity and blue economy commitments, he says, is the declaration of a section of the Pedro Bank as a protected area, which is expected to be accomplished this year. Jamaica is rapidly moving towards its target of 30% protection of its terrestrial areas and 30% protection of its marine areas. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.
want to encourage the membership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But more so, the, the, the citizens of Jamaica to, to respond to the opportunity to be vaccinated. The evidence around suggests that most persons who have not, who are being hospitalized, are those persons who have not taken any form of vaccine. A house is four walls. I'm almost certain you've heard this before. But did you know that a house is not a home? A house creates an environment for love to be planted, nourished and grown, which is what makes a home. The end product is happiness, having a sense of comfort and safety. What are the benefits? A society with persons more likely to conform to law and order with the ability to make meaningful contributions and shape healthy social and familial structures. The government of Jamaica is on a mission to support that by creating an environment wherein a home can be made. The house what I was living in, it was herbal. And I get a nice three bedroom, living hall, kitchen and bathroom. I want to say thank you so much. This coming from my heart. Since 2019, the National Social Housing Program has been delivering solutions to eliminate housing poverty on the island. Already, 36 units have been delivered. And recently, government opened a low-cost housing design competition to place roofs over the heads of even more Jamaicans. I'm very interested in seeing what the solutions that you bring to the table are because we are going to take them and put them into practice. The transformation of Jamaica starts now. Through the competition launched in May, the state will access creative, original, resilient, low-cost housing designs. It's anticipated that this will accelerate home ownership under the National Social Housing Program, NSHP. What we want to get from the competition is a design unit that uses materials that are easily, easily available, cost-effective materials, but materials that are also durable, that are suited for our environment, and uh, materials that are easy to use in the construction process. Between May and August, 305 architects, urban planners and developers at home and in the diaspora registered for the competition. Submissions were done individually or in teams with a maximum of five persons. Selected designs were low-cost, original, climate-smart, disabled, enabled, and able to be configured for the Jamaican terrain. Prize money of between $250,000 and a million dollars has been set aside for the top three entrants. Whatever solutions that come up, even those solutions that don't win, the government would take that application, put it through our bureaucracy, and then have it implemented. The designs will be used as a model for the National Social Housing Program, NSHP, a component of the Housing, Opportunity, Production and Employment Hope Program the NSHP was developed in 2018 to improve the housing conditions of the country's poor and indigent. The objective is achieved through three modalities. The first is the provision of indigent housing. The benefits will be equitably distributed across 63 constituencies, with each constituency receiving five units per annum. Then there is the relocation of vulnerable communities. Persons whose lives are in imminent danger will be given priority attention. And then the third modality is the upgrading of tenements, or as we call them, big yards. Uh, one such project will be undertaken in each constituency where we can identify tenement yards. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation has oversight for the NSHP, which is administered by a secretariat headed by National Director Danville Walker. The NHSP delivered its first house in 2019, and since then, 
36 additional homes have been supplied at a combined cost of $376 million. I just ask me about to give up in answer. No, police are going to have fight for something we said. Just approach we said time. So you know, so we're glad that we can explain to them. And I know that you will impact a lot of persons just as though you impact me, my life, my children, my family. I could never have done this on my own. So <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> this is not and will not be taken for granted. But we will, of course, sleep like kings and queens tonight. <laughs> of course, so we are grateful. What's more, 28 units are currently under construction and another 29 are to commence shortly. 45 projects are at various stages of procurement, with 7 to go to tender shortly. And recently, a memorandum of understanding was signed for the construction of the Victoria Palms housing development. Through the project, 200 residents of Denham Town in Kingston will be relocated to more secure accommodations. We believe that good housing, good shelter is a right and we are going to do everything in our powers to ensure that you can benefit from one of these shelter solutions. Even if you're poor and indigent, it shouldn't be that you live in a little tattoo where if the slightest breeze blow it could collapse. Or if there's a spring club rain, you get wet. That is a commitment that this government has to our people, that all Jamaicans, regardless of your social standard, your social circumstances, there should be a minimum level of shelter, of housing, that you are entitled to as a citizen of this country. I can't tell you that overnight we are going to transform all the dilapidated poor housing conditions like this to this. I couldn't promise you that. But what I can commit to you is that I am going to try my hardest to move from this to this. What a way you full up our roots and culture. <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. How old are you celebrating? <laughs> me say the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, oh no. Them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta, you know. medal. Come on, tap, tap, we did that, you know. Tap, tap. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2000. 2022 organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it free. Why free? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If they don't know the app to get the updates then. Remember earlier I told you to fill the prescription that will take you to your goals? Here's a tool that will help. It's a space to reset, recharge, reconnect, and restore balance. It has the ability to heal. Just let go of all ills. Inhale the beauty. Taste and feel of nature and submerge yourself into any one of these spaces. They offer a large serving of nature with a dash of history and science. Public gardens, created and maintained to educate Jamaicans on the importance of plant life. They also provide free green spaces to enjoy the benefits of the great outdoors. There are four such spaces on the island, all supported by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries. And after making our way through Bath and trekking through Castleton in the first part of our journey, 
We're now 4,800 feet above sea level. The Sincona Botanical Gardens, located in the cool, moist hills of East Rural St. Andrew. Sincona was first established in 1868 by the then governor, Sir John Peter Grant. At that time, the gardens was used as an experimental location. Various plants from other European countries were brought here for medicinal purposes, like the eucalyptus, the camphor, and other herbs are grown up here. Sincona is unique as it is the only garden in the Caribbean at such a high elevation. Sincona got its name at the time when there was um, a malaria infestation in the, uh, on the island. And that Sincona plant was brought to Jamaica by a governor of Peru. The Sincona plant was used to cure the malaria by way of extracting the bark of the plant and transforming that into quinine. And they used that to work on the malaria. There are no conservation programs at Sincona, but if you're feeling adventurous, make the hike and study an array of exotic plants on location including the almost 200-year-old hoop pine. Our journey ends at the largest green space in the Kingston metropolitan area. Though run by the non-governmental organization Nature Preservation Foundation, it still receives a subsidy from the government and is free to the public. Hope Gardens comprises of 260 acres stretching from Old Hope Road to Skyline Drive. But the actual gardens is mainly 60 active acres. The garden was a gift to Major Richard Hope, who was part of the contingency of Penn and Velables who came to conquer the island in about 1655 when the English invaded and took over from the Spanish. Hope was an experimental site. They introduced exotic plants here and we planted them on the island once successfully propagated. Offspring of these plants remain in the garden. We have the cannonball tree which is native to the Amazon rainforest that bears a fruit that takes 18 months to ripe and it also weighs about 15 pounds. We also have the sausage tree and that fruit can weigh anywhere between 15 to 27 pounds and it really does look like a huge German sausage. The tree is native to West Africa in Senegal. Hope is vital in the conservation of the island's wildlife and flora. We have a particular project in which we go to the cockpit country and get endemic plants, take them back to Hope Gardens, grow them and reintroduce them into the wild. The zoo also has a world famous iguana project in which they have rediscovered the local Jamaican iguana, bred them successfully in captivity, and has, have introduced over 400 native iguanas into the hills of Helsha. This garden is usually bustling with activities. Family gatherings, professional photography, and school excursions are among the popular happenings. The Chinese garden is also a special place within the Hope Gardens. It was a gift, a, a three million US dollar gift from the People's Republic of China to the people and government of Jamaica. I like about Hope Gardens is that you are free. You can do anything you want. You can paint, you can play, you can go to the zoo, like see the animals. My group came here because we have um, a history group project. We thought that coming to the Hope Gardens would be a good idea, especially on a Sunday, because on a Sunday it's quiet and I think it's very conducive to practice. There is um, greenery and it's an open space, so you know you get a nice fresh breath of air while you're here and it's, um, I think it helps you to focus more on what you need to do. 
Hope Gardens is a getaway for persons wanting a break from the hustle and bustle of city life. A visit to public gardens provides this opportunity. Nature beckons. What are you waiting for? I must urge all users of cyberspace, do not for fear of being labeled a victim, refuse to report or follow through the process. Once you think that there is something wrong, seek advice. And the easiest way to get that advice is to come to Jamaica CERT or to go to the nearest police station. You will not be looked down upon for being a victim of cybercrime because it is a matter of when for us all, not if. To report a cybercrime, call or visit the website of the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team or make a report to your nearest police station. We just pulled into our final stop, but don't disembark just yet, as this was a reminder that we have always been passengers of time. So be conscious of this fact and maximize every opportunity to have fun, learn something new, and seek opportunities that are gratifying. Also, I do hope that you were ably informed and look forward to connecting with you on our YouTube channel and social media pages. We are always eager to share with you, so join us again tomorrow for another edifying half hour. Until then, the team here at the GIS and I wish you a safe and fulfilling week. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.